Hey everyone, this is Dr. Jess Narian. I am here to talk to you today about getting an accommodation letter and what next, right? So when you get an accommodation letter, it's uh, really a roadmap of um, things that are going to be unique for the access for that unique student in your class, okay? Um, I'm going to share with you a little bit about what I like to do when I get an accommodation letter in class, bearing in mind that every single person is different and folks just navigate these spaces that we teach in in wildly different ways. So the best I know to do is to share with you a little bit of a story of something that's worked for me, right? So when I get an accommodation letter, I like to actually print it out and put it in a secure private place. And every single time I get an accommodation letter, um, I put it in that same place. So I have a stack of accommodation letters. And if and if I have a student saying I have an accommodation letter, but I don't have an accommodation letter, I, I know that pretty quickly because I've got that stack of accommodation letters. If that comes up, I encourage them to come back and talk to our office and get their accommodation letter on file and get it with me. But assuming that that student has their accommodation letter and that that accommodation letter has been sent to me, I keep them all in a really safe place. I go through them carefully and I think about, is there anything that I need to do from day one, right? Um, do they have a special seating arrangement? Um, do, are there mobility um, needs that need to be thought about from before my class even opens, if I have the letter before class? Um, are there unique needs related to how this individual experiences the world that I could build into my teaching um, as part of universal design for learning, um, ultimately making the class better for everyone, right? I still have these big questions and then these little questions and I'll think about it and I'll reflect on it, right? Because our students are worthy of the best of us. Sometimes that takes a little bit of reflection. So if there's any tweaks or adjustments to be made um, from square one, I will make those tweaks or adjustments. And then I put those letters back in a safe spot. If others trickle in throughout the term, I put them in the, that safe spot as well. Now, what do I do with it then? Right. So let me give you an example. A lot of times I get the accommodation extra time on assignments. So to me, and I'll make a whole separate video about this, but to me, that means one of the things I'm going to be doing is checking to make sure that I've honored that in my grade book at the very, you know, in the middle of class, at the end of class, whenever I'm really checking progress, right? So that their work looks right in the grade book at various touch points as well. So I'll check maybe about four or five weeks in and make sure that all the accommodations are implemented, put my letters away. I'll check again about eight weeks. And then as I'm finalizing my grades before they go to the roster, I'll check one last time. Is there anything I missed? Was there any other detail that maybe I thought, oh, I'm going to come right back to this. And then, you know, it was just this crazy day of class or whatever. Um, what is there something such as extra time for assignments where I need to make sure that my grade book matches the accommodation before I submit to the grade roster, right? Other accommodations, you can't go back necessarily at that late date, right? If there's a testing accommodation that, that kind of needs to happen in real time, we're here, we'll support you in it. But some things really can be checked throughout the term. And um, it's this great opportunity um, to make sure that we're showing up for each individual in our class, not just um, uh, com combining them into an average, right? Because we know that our students, um, they're not average, they're extraordinary, and they're worthy of the best that we can bring them every day. And we do bring them the best we can bring them every day. Um, but I found that if I didn't keep those accommodation letters somewhere, um, sometimes I would lose track, right? Or sometimes I would go, oh, yeah. um, and, you know, I'll get to that. And then it would kind of drift and it would get buried by the 8 million emails we get or whatever. So for me, the thing that worked really well is having these multiple touch points so that I could make sure that all accommodations were being implemented at multiple times throughout the term in bulk instead of like this one by one drip, drip, drip. Um, that's what works for me. Everyone does it different. Um, we're here to support you no matter how it is that you might do this. But I just wanted to share a story with you about um, 
getting the accommodation letter and how it is that it helps me to navigate the unknown number of accommodation letters I might get in any given term um, and making sure that I deliver the accommodations um, that are uh, given and assigned to the students that I have in class. So I hope this helps. I look forward to learning the ways that you navigate your accommodation letters and ways that work for you. I would love to share out other stories. Feel free to share them with me at jessica.narian at csusb.edu. Thanks so much.